Hello all loonies and normals, my name is Joe Silva, welcome to my channel. This week I'm going to talk about controller versus keyboard and mouse. Uh, as of yesterday, I got myself a, key, a controller, for the first time in ages to be honest with you, I've had a controller in my hand. I almost never had one for a PC, and I obviously had one for consoles because that's what they came with, but... I now do have one because I was gifted Sonic Mania and Sonic Mania Plus and I thought much better to play that game with a controller so I went and got myself one. But it led me to the idea of doing my vlog on controller versus keyboard and mouse. Now on both sides there are many pluses. Let's start with the what I know best, keyboard and mouse. With the keyboard and mouse, many people might complain, oh, you know, they don't like keyboard and mouse. You can't really do, you can't really play certain games on keyboard and mouse. It doesn't make sense. It's horrible, you know. But to me, with keyboard and mouse, there's a lot more keys. So you can put in a lot more information. You're not struggling to work it out on about 8 or 10 keys or 12 keys or whatever, however many buttons you can get on the controller you've got a lot more c controls because you not only have you got the entire letters of the alphabet, you've got all the other bits, numbers and all the other controls around that. So you've got a lot more controls that you can use. And WASD is fairly easy for me to use anyway. WASD, as they call it, and, you know, and so on. So with that side, keyboard can be very good. And I... To be honest with you, for most games, I still would use a keyboard and mouse. I've that's the kind of one I've always used. But the downside of that is the awkward controls sometimes. For example, with Sonic Mania, they don't want you to use WASD. They want you to use the directional keys. Now that's a bit awkward because then you've got to write that. You see, so you've got to use the right hand and then the left hand for like jump or whatever. So the controls are a bit awkward. So Again, that means is why you use the keyboard, uh, use the controller. So, you know, keyboard does allow a lot more versatility, and from the majority of and quite a few of the video games for the PC are set up with keyboard and mouse in mind because they're for PC. Consoles use controllers, so they set them up with that in mind, but. PC is set up with keyboard and mouse in, in mind. So I've often used keyboard and mouse. And like I said, you know, there are many pluses. But some of the downsides is that reaching some of these controls when you're trying to operate the controls can be a bit awkward. For example, if you're trying to do WASD and you're trying to reach the shift and control keys at the same time, that can be a bit awkward, or depending how big your keyboard is. Or, you know, trying to remember what controls you're supposed to be pushing because there's so many of them. And, you know, and just like I said, some people are right-handed, some are left-handed, so maybe the keyboard isn't set up quite right for them. Though, as I said, I use my left hand for Wazder anyway, so that makes no difference and I'm right-handed. Um, but... You know, there's so there are downsides though, because like I said, there's so many keys that you will go with there going right, which one does what, you know, and so on. But as I said, there are reasons why a keyboard is good and there are reasons why a keyboard is bad. You know, it's it's all it all varies on your opinion really. My opinion is I like keyboard and mouse and I will use it where necessary. But now that I have this controller, if I feel that a controller would be better, I will use that. Let's go on to the controller itself though. Why controller over keyboard and mouse? Well, as I've just said, there are times when a keyboard is not so good, where it's awkward, it's etc, etc. And although a keyboard a controller only has can have up to 12 buttons, including the thumbstick clicking, and that's all you've got, so less controls. That in itself can be a bonus because it means you're not looking around going, what does what? Because you know, there's very few controls 
So you you can memorize them, you can learn them, and you can use them, and you can get to know them very quickly. Another bonus of a key of a controller is the comfort of the position that you're in. You you like this rather than like this, trying to work out what all the controls are. So you know the comfort of it, and the fact that as I said, use the thumbsticks and the d-pad and so on you can use it a lot easier and with some games it really does make the difference some games it is a lot easier to use and a lot of games are, are do have controller support i mean some games on steam have partial controller support which even i'm not completely sure what that means but they have that but some have full controller support in which case it really is easier because you using the controller in fact because some games it, it, I've seen on Steam where it says recommended that you have a controller to play this game you know that sort of thing so it's like wow okay in fact one game and I can't remember which but one game if you don't have a controller you can't play it because it's pure controller one game on Steam and I forget which I was, but I did think that was a bit odd but you go on and it's strongly recommended that you have a controller in fact you know without controller you know you can't play it because as i said it's not recommended it's required which is weird but you know so it's like okay but as i have one now i could play that game now but i've forgotten what it is anyway and you know but with another advantage of the controller is that everything is, you know, kept in, relatively kept in place within reach. And like I said, it's a lot smaller, so everything's in reach. The triggers, the buttons, everything's within reach without moving your hands too much. And you, you know, and like I said, with there only being so few buttons, you can, you know what you're looking at. But what about the disadvantages of a controller? Because, let's be honest, I've talked about the advantages of a controller and, and I talked about the disadvantage of a keyboard and now I'm going to talk about the disadvantages of a controller. In my opinion, its lack of amount of buttons is one. As I said with con keyboard, the controller has 12 buttons at most, yeah? That's including the two where you click the thumbsticks, right? It has the D-pad, it has you know, so on and so forth. So it has very few controls. That's one disadvantage. Another disadvantage is you've got to get get thing out, plug it in, whereas, especially if you use a laptop as I do, the keyboard comes with it. It's always plugged in. Now, I mean, all right, you could say, always plug the keyboard, the controller in, like I have. That's fair enough. But a lot of people don't like to do that. A lot of people like to put it away when and have to take it out when certain games complain because you've got a controller in and you're not trying to use the controller. So there's that side of things as well. So then you've got to get it out, plug it in, make sure it's working, make sure... Thing. If you have a wireless one, then you've got to put batteries in it and so on and so forth. So it can be a little bit of a fuss if you're, you know, if you think think about it. But another disadvantage of the controller is, like I said, is when you're trying to play a game that, where the buttons require more than the you can possibly put on the keyboard. You can put the main ones onto the keyboard. Uh, on the controller, I do apologise. I keep switching what thing I'm saying. I apologise. No, but... Is when you can more buttons than you can possibly have on a con controller, then you have to use the keyboard because you have to take your hand off the controller, push the keyboard because to do the extra stuff that you can't possibly fit on a controller. So you still have to fall back on keyboard sometimes anyway. So you know that's a disadvantage. And to be honest with you. The the other disadvantage is the fact that you have to buy a controller. All computers come with keyboards, and all control computers come with mice. Not 
all control computers come with controllers. They don't come with controllers as standard. They come with keyboard and mice as standard. They don't come with controllers as standard. So then you have to go out and you have to buy it. And then so it's then it's a case of well, which one's the best one to get? Which one's good will do what I want it to do? You know, can I get this cheapy one, like I did by the way, or do I have to get this three hundred pound one that does everything, including make a cup of tea? You know, not literally, but you know what I mean. Do I have to get that one because is that one better? So it's then wondering which one is best and which one's not, which one's rubbish and which one will break down within two minutes and which one will last years, etc, etc. You know, like I said, I just went by the price. I couldn't afford the ones in Argos, so I went to a game exchange and got a cheapie. It does me. For, it's done me for now and it'll probably break down very quickly it'll probably because that's the other thing as well if if you get a keyboard if the buttons start coming off you can just click them back on but if the buttons start coming off on a key on a controller you can't click really click them back on because they never work properly after that they sort of start breaking down and, uh, and the buttons and probably because you've played a lot of button mashing games tick, 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 you know, they get the see, you start pushing the buttons and the buttons don't register, and that very rarely happens on a keyboard. Like I say, if, if the buttons start coming off on a keyboard, it's probably because you've pushed it too hard and the thing's gone boing and flown off. But you just pick it up, click, click it back on, and it starts working again. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not impossible for a keyboard to malfunction in such a way that the buttons don't work. And in that way you have to then replace the keyboard as you would do have to do with the controller but my point is the keyboard tends to take a lot more punishment if you get the right one anyway because they expect it to take more punishment i mean like i said with controllers you just play too many button mashing games and the buttons just give up and refuse to work or they get stuck in or into the so it's like they're being constantly pressed or whatever. So, you know, and it's like, oh, for goodness sake. So you have to sort of replace it, get a new one, set that one up and make sure that it's working and everything. And like I said, it, it, in some ways, I mean, in some ways there are arguments on both sides. That on both sides, both can be convenient or inconvenient. And to be honest with you, throughout this vlog, I have never said that I prefer one over the other because I don't. There are times when I will go for keyboard and mouse and most of the time that's that's the case. But there are times where a controller is required, which is why I've gone out and got one because a controller is required and I'm beginning to realize that a controller is required and I can't play these games without one and I've not had one for a long while so it's been like well I can't play them well now I can and so there are times where a controller is required or is recommended and you know and so that's best but there are times where keyboard and mouse is recommended or required so the times where that best. like I mean like for example I used to play Elite Dangerous now to be honest with you, they that game you could use a controller with, but I don't know how because there, it had a lot of functions that you had to, uh, a real lot of functions that you had to map to controller, way more than I, I think you could reasonably get on a controller unless you started doing combinations of buttons to extend it a bit, but even then, you know, so, yeah it's sort of what do you do you know I mean it's a lot of functions but that's what I'm saying with some games they, they do have a lot of functions and it's because they're set up for keyboard and mouse and I mean some games it would be impossible to play with a controller could you imagine trying to play something like Theme Hospital um, Roller Coaster Tycoon Planet Coaster games like that that definitely use the mouse with a controller now you might say some of these games came out on console and were made to work, but were they really as good as the PC versions? Because 
with those you have to use the mouse to drag the mouse, put it the object down in a certain way and use the mouse to, to manipulate what you want done with the thing. Now could you really imagine trying to do all that with a controller? You couldn't. So that's what I said. So there are times where a controller is required and there are times where a keyboard is required. But at the end of the day, whether or not it is controller or mouse or keyboard and mouse is your choice, they both have their advantages and they both have their disadvantages. And that is what I've been looking at today. Now I have waffled on enough, I think. I think I've covered the subject reasonably well. As always, if you have any suggestions for what I should talk about next week, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. If um, you've liked what you've seen here, leave me a comment telling me that. Leave a sub, leave a like. You know, thank you so much for watching. And I have been Joe Silver. This has been a vlog. Goodbye.